This is the heart of Warsaw, Poland, the Old Town Square, or in Polish, Rynek Starego Miasta. It's been here for 700, 800 years. It's historic, it's beautiful, it's charming, and it's something of a fake, because the real Old Town was destroyed, leveled completely by the retreating German armies at the end of 1944, 1945, as World War II was coming to an end. Hitler, retaliating against the Poles, ordered that the, the whole city be brought down. And so this was just a pile of rubble when Warsaw's citizens returned from their evacuation to find almost nothing left. And painstakingly, Warsaw proudly rebuilt this square and this city. Lutosławski and his mother returned to devastated Warsaw in April 1945. The next year, he married Danuta Bogosławska, who was to be his lifelong companion. As Polish society began slowly to put itself back together, so did Lutosławski begin to put his musical career back together. A key step came when he was befriended by the pianist Władysław Spielmann, head of music at Polish Radio. The same Spielmann who later figured as the protagonist of Roman Polanski's film The Pianist. His widow, Szalina Spielmann, remembers those years. To był lata 50. to był najgorszy okres stalinowski. W ten czas oczywiście dla każdego, kto musiał w tym okresie tworzyć, to była specjalna specyfika tego tworzenia, nie mówiąc o tym, że trudności były natury psychologicznej, jak się znaleźć w tym całym świecie, który nas otaczał. Trudności życia na pewno miały dość duże i w ten czas nawet mój mąż zaproponował mu żeby pisał nie pod swoim nazwiskiem kompozycje rozrywkowe, które w ten czas mogły być wykonywane w radio i to były jakieś możliwości egzystencji. at the Polish radio where Lutosławski made his living basically for several years, late 40s, early 50s, writing all sorts of things. The library has brought us a few samples. This is a piece from 1950 called Little Sweet. It's for a small orchestra, kind of light music radio orchestra. The material is basically folk music, but in interesting, chromatic, colorful settings. It looks to me like a kind of sketch for the bigger version of this style that is the Concerto for Orchestra just a few, a few years later. And one of the critics called it, uh, called the Concerto for Orchestra, Little Sweet to the Tenth Power, <laughs> which I think pretty much sums up going where as, he was going. Going uh, as yeah. far as he could with this, in a way, limited language, folklore-based language, you know, um, limited because of political conditions, but he carried it absolutely as far as he could. We have a series of songs here. These are frankly what were called mass songs, socialist, realist people's songs. This one is called Nova Huta, which is a steel mill in southern Poland. Uh, this one is called we, we Go Forward, and this is called Service to Poland. These were pretty well-known songs in their day. This one, which is called Green Hat, is uh, not even signed by Lutosławski. He signs it with his pop music pseudonym, David. <laughs> <laughs> but these are catchy songs. It was supposed to be a very standard kind of uh, way of composing, but, but he always put some kind of interesting harmonic thing in. Um, so there's always some kind of identity. You know, even at the first glance, you can tell yeah. that, that it's, it's not run of the mill, um, or else the, the mill is on a, on a very high level. <laughs> the mill is on a very <laughs> high level. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote also some signals, some little jingles to announce over the radio. And um, it looks as if they were made different ones for different regional you know, transmitters. And it's about five seconds long. It's, it's almost nothing. It's a little, fragment of, it's a little fragment of folk melody. Mm -hmm. 
But the harmonization, see if I can do this. And then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was possible to, even in the jingles on Polish radio, to get some good stuff in the early 50s. <laughs> There's an echo from um, Boris Godunov in that one. Ah. Don't you think? You mean the, this, this bit? The, the, that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The other tune, the Lublin tune. <laughs> so if you, you take this diatonic folk tune and you put his chromatic harmony with it, he called this diatonic melodies with atonal harmonizations, but they're not atonal at all. He just meant chromatic. He was experimenting with harmony and using these simple materials and even this kind of, you know, very basic assignment to, to work things out. So... And this has to do with um, Bartok's uh idea of harmonizing folk music, uh, that um, he was very much against the, the traditional um, tonic dominant kind of harmonization of, of folk music from the region. And, uh, and he was kind of pointing out that, that mostly uh, the original harmonization is, is either modal or else it, it, it goes in sort of parallel movements or whatever, but the sort of one five one kind of harmonization is, is rarely used in this kind of folk music. Well, I mean, let's just, here, here's a bad one, right? Right, that's what we <laughs> don't want, and so yes. instead, you know, yeah. something fresh and original and compelling. Yeah. yeah, and here we basically, we're also moving in parallel fifths, which, which is a big, big no-no. Oh. So all of that wasted time during the uh, Stalinist socialist realism period wasn't being entirely wasted. Uh, you know, he was using his circumstances to write some experimental pieces for the drawer, which he put in the drawer, but also to, to use the, uh, his assignments at Polish radio and in the theater to, uh, and in film music to uh, you know, experiment with materials that were gonna come in handy for real pieces and develop his chops, as they say. Yeah. Thank you. 